Okay, we're still working away on Unit 18. We're going to uh, cover some material out of Box D here, polygon properties. And the big kind of question that we're looking to be able to answer by the end of this lesson is to be able to find the values of unknown angles. Okay, so we're going to go through a number of properties of polygons, and then we're always going to be applying them to solve for unknown angles. So to start us off, some stuff that I think is a review from grade 7 and grade 8 here, just some general angle properties. So if you see something like this first picture here, where we've got this nice little L shape and it's divided into two angles, and they give us one angle here that is 25 degrees, what do we call these two angles right here? Well, these are called complementary angles. And they're called complementary angles because they add up to 90 degrees. So, um, and I think you've got it on your sheet just that they're complementary. You should add in the fact that they always add to 90 degrees here. So a typical kind of question might be that they give you this picture here, 25 degrees, complementary angles, and they give you an unknown angle here. We'll just call it X because we don't know what it is. And they would say something like, okay, find the value of angle X. Well, you would know that X plus 25 is 90 degrees, so X must equal 90 minus 25. So X is going to equal, punch this into your calculator, 65 degrees. So you would have found the measure of the unknown angle. And that's the basic kind of question that we are going to be doing in this lesson here. Um, another type that you might remember are supplementary angles that form to make this straight line. So this angle, I'll go back to red, this angle here, and this angle here are called supplementary angles. They make a straight line, or they add up to 180 degrees. So again, if I've got this unknown angle x here, how am I going to figure out what x is? Measure. Yeah, 180 minus 45. Punch this into our calculator. x must be 135 degrees. Another property, if you've got two lines that intersect, sometimes they'll label all of the angles sort of around in here, A, B, C, and D. What we're interested in here, angles that are sort of opposite each other across this uh, point of intersection. So angles A and B and C and D. Opposite angles so across from this vertex here, are always equal to each other. So we know from this diagram here that angle A is equal to angle B, because they're opposite, and we know that angle C is equal to angle D. What else do we know about these angles A, B, C, and D? Um, what do we get if we add A and C together? Measure. It'd be 180. Why? Because it's a straight line or those are supplementary angles. And we could do the same thing with BC, BD, AD, and so on and so on. What do we get if we add A, B, C, and D all together? Lexi. How do you know it's going to be 360? drawing this in. Because it goes in a circle. They go together to make a complete circle. There are 360 degrees in a complete circle. The other way to think about it might be, hey, if we add A and C together, we get 180, If we, because they form a straight line. If we add B and D together, they're going to be 180, because they form a straight line. If we add 180 and 180 together, we get 360. Okay. Now, move on to polygon properties here. Okay? So this is the typical kind of question that you're going to see. We've got a bunch of these here. Um, they give you a shape. They give you some of the angles. They give you an unknown angle. And your job is to find the missing angles here. Okay? 
So first one here, we've got a triangle. We've got 55 degrees, we've got 61 degrees. We're trying to find the measure of that angle A out there. Okay? There are two ways of doing this one. One way is to use what we did in the last lesson. What do we know about the sum of the interior angles of a triangle? If we add up all those angles inside the triangle, here, here, and here, what are we going to get for our total? She knows, what is it? 180, yeah. So, I'm putting a red box around that one. That's an important one to know. Okay? The sum of the interior angles of a triangle are 180 degrees. So, we could figure out what this unknown angle is inside here. How could we do that? Well, if we know that this, this, and this add up to 180, we know that B is going to be. 180 minus 55 degrees minus 61 degrees. Punch this into our calculator. B has to be 64 degrees. Now, how is that going to help us figure out what angle A is on the other side? Nazareth. Well, it's just like straight up. It's just like the last angle would be B. Yeah. Because these two angles are supplementary. They form that nice straight line. So A is going to be that 180 degrees minus our 64 degrees for B. We get that angle A is going to be 116 degrees. Okay. And it makes sense, kind of when we look at that picture, that A is 160 <coughs> degrees. It looks like it's bigger than 90 degrees. It's what we call an uh, obtuse angle. So that kind of fits. Okay. There is another way of doing this question, okay, which is a little bit trickier. I'm going to show it to you here. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space here. Okay. It uses what is known as the exterior angle theorem of triangles. So exterior angle theorem. Okay. And the exterior angle theorem says that if I've got an exterior angle on my triangle, which A is, it is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. So not the one next to it, but the ones on the opposite sides. Okay. So A is here. It is equal to this one over here plus this one over here. Okay. So for this triangle, it tells us that A is equal to 55 degrees plus... 61 degrees, because those are the opposite interior angles. And sure enough, when we add them up, we get 116 degrees, just like when we use the interior angles. Okay. So that's the exterior angle theorem, and this only works for triangles. Okay. Okay, so two ways of doing that first question. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Here we've got a triangle again. And they've given us an exterior angle, an exterior angle, and our unknown is another exterior angle. Okay. What do we know about the exterior angles of any polygon? Exterior angles, any polygon add to add to a specific number. We talked about this on Monday. What do they always add up to? Think of it like this. You start here, you go one angle, the next angle, the next angle, you end up back here, so you've gone all the way around the outside of your shape. What do those angles have to add up to? 360 degrees. Okay, and this works for any polygon, not just 
times. Okay. So I'm putting a red box around that one. That one's a good one to know too. So how do we use that to figure out what B is? What are we going to do? How can we solve for B? Andrew, what do you think? These three things have to add up to 360. We can do... Yeah. Or we can just say 360, that B is going to be 360 minus the 93 minus the 137. Okay. Punch that in and we get... 130 degrees. <laughs> okay. This one's kind of tricky. All right, what kind of triangle do we have here? Anybody remember? It's got two sides with these tick marks on them. That tells us these... Uh, Sides are the same length. Let's see. This is an isosceles triangle. Okay. Isosceles. And in an isosceles triangle, okay, you always have two sides that are the same length. You also have two angles that are the same length, the same size. And it's always the ones that are opposite the sides that are the same length. So if this side and this side are the same length, this angle and this angle are the same size. So let's call those two angles that are the same size, I don't know, let's label them Y. Y and Y. Okay? Let's start by figuring out what Y is going to be. Well, what do we know about the interior angles of a triangle? What do they have to add up to? 180. So we know that if we do y plus y plus 68, we get 180 degrees. Okay. How can we figure out what y is? Well, let's see. Guys, what? Exactly, exactly. All right, we got two y's here, so we can put those y's together, 2y, and we can subtract. 68 from both sides here. Okay, so 100 minus 68 is going to give us 112 degrees. Oops. Okay, and then, just as Desert said, we're going to divide by 2. We're taking that 112 that we have left over from our 180 and dividing it evenly between these two angles. So, divide by 2, divide by 2, and we get uh, 56 degrees. We're halfway there now. We've got our value for y. How can we figure out what x is? Because they wanted us to do x in this question here. Emerson. Absolutely. We know that those two angles, x and y, add up to 180. So we can do 180 minus 56. And we do this subtraction, and we end up with 124 degrees. And that's our final answer right there. That's what they wanted us to figure out. Okay. okay. All right. We're making progress here. So this is, so you might want to remember this fact here about isosceles triangles, about those two equal angles. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the next one here. Again, we're still finding the measure of the missing angle in each polygon here. What kind of a polygon do we have here? What do we call this thing with four sides? Three sides is a triangle, four sides it's a quadrilateral, yes. Okay, so quadrilateral We're trying to find one of the interior angles. So, what is the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral?
if you forget, always think of taking your shape, starting at one vertex, and dividing it into triangles by do drawing these diagonals. That divides it into two triangles. What is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle? We've already talked about this. So if we have two triangles, 360 degrees. So the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Red box around that one because it's worth remembering. Okay, so now how are we going to find what x is? Once you got that 360, it should be pretty straightforward. Emerson. Yeah, we could add up 65, 95, and what's this one here? 90 degrees, and then subtract it all from 360. Or we could just do 360 minus each one of these angles. Mathematically, it's the same thing. Minus 95 minus the 90 degrees, and that's going to end up with, um, I get 110 when I do that. Okay? All right, so we got 110. Good job. Okay. Next one here. What kind of a shape do we have here? Again, a quadrilateral. But this time we're working with the exterior angles. Okay, so what do we know about the sum of the exterior angles of a quadrilateral? Sum of exterior angles of a quadrilateral slash quadrilateral. Oh, that's right. What do they add up to? Emerson. 360. Emerson's been paying attention. Because any polygon, they add up to 360. Okay, that's the easy one to remember. But it's worth remembering nonetheless. So, how are we going to figure out what angle G is here? Rashat, you can do this one, I know. Yeah, subtract all of these things from 360. So, we're going to write out G equals 360 minus 74 minus 88 minus 105. And that gets us, as we punch this into our calculator, 93 degrees. Okay. All right. Last one here that we're going to do. Here we have a special kind of quadrilateral. This is called a, anybody know what this is? It's a parallelogram. You know it's a parallelogram because the top and the bottom are parallel and the two sides are parallel. And um, I think all of our sides are, th well this side, top side and bottom side are the same length. This side and this side are the same length. So this is a parallelogram. Okay. We want to figure out both X and Y. There are a couple things to know about parallelograms. There, there are two ways of doing this question. Okay? One is that in a parallelogram, the opposite angles are equal to each other. Okay? That means that this angle here and the angle opposite it are the same. Same thing with these two angles over here. So using that property, it's pretty easy to get what x and y are. x is going to be, I'll move this down a little bit here, x is going to be 130 and y is going to be 50. Okay. The other way of doing it is if we look at sort of two angles that are next to each other, kind of forming a little C in here like this, 
these two angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So angles that are next to each other are called adjacent angles. Okay, adjacent angles add to 180 degrees. So I could have done this question by doing 180 degrees minus 130 to get 50, which would give me y. Okay. Or I could have done in the um, on the other side here. I could have done because these two in here are adjacent angles. 50, uh, 180 minus 50 to get 130 for x. So either way I wanted to do the question, I could have done it. Okay. These properties. Um, usually only hold true for parallelograms, though. If you got a different kind of quadrilateral, it's not going to work. Okay. And we are done.